Hi, I'm Dustin Berg, the founder of ProAVSchool.com. And I'm Gustavo de Beauval, lead AV technician and owner of Core Audiovisual Inc., based out of Calgary, Alberta. I myself have been in professional audiovisual for almost 20 years now in various roles and capacities, kind of starting from the ground as a rental technician and kind of in moving up the roles into a manager role. And then right now I'm doing subcontract Crestron programming as a Crestron service provider. That's cool. I mean, most of us stumbled into AV perhaps by chance. No one really knows too much about the industry because there's not a lot of information out there. The truth is I was in uh, recording engineering, recording bands, doing music, and uh, due to the industry being what it was, it was much more feasible to get a leg in on the AV side of things. But um, throughout the years, I've learned a lot of different skills, work your way from the bottom up, started out not even knowing how to use a drill or work from a ladder, and just through trial and error, hard work and sweat, and lots of years, uh, I've got to the point where I'm really good at what I do, and I also run a company and I create opportunities and jobs for good guys out there. The industry has definitely changed over the last 20 years that I've been involved in it. And we're seeing it's growing huge. Everybody needs AV. Um, what I'm finding is that the training that manufacturers provide is very, very focused and specific on their product in a very specific and focused way. And with pr the videos that I'm doing and the content that I'm creating for Pro AV School, I'm trying to kind of widen that scope so that I can demonstrate how different things interconnect. Because a lot of the systems that I'm working on and involved in include products from different manufacturers. And I think that's a trend that, that happens a lot. True. I mean, when I started, the entry point into AV was really basic because the opportunities were so uh, vast. So the word on the street was, if you know how to use a DVD player, then you have what it takes to start AV. Clearly things have changed since uh, the early 2000s, but um, I think there still exists a huge vacuum for good talent. And how do we start to get people interested in AV? Well, we tell them what it's about. I mean, right now we have a bit of a system here built because we want to show you, we want to uh, collaborate between the two departments, installation and programming. And as a programmer, um, I often go to site and find that the people that installed it, the technicians that installed it, they, they follow the plans, but they don't really understand what the product is and how it's supposed to go together or even really what it's supposed to do. They consider their job done because that's all they're really taught. They consider their job done when, when it's all hooked up and it turns on and then it's the programmer's job. But I found that there's a lot of stuff that, a, that an installer could do to verify that things are actually working and it adds value to their skill set because they can basically, instead of just being somebody that plugs in wires, they can be somebody who's intelligently setting up the system and saying, you know, it's ready, it works. I've tested this certain certain components of it, and I'm confident that it's working, and that makes you more valuable as an employee. Okay, I see. Uh, <clears throat> I see where this is going, and I agree 100%. I mean, throughout the years. Installation technicians have always been tasked with quite a bit of work. You know, we got to grab all the equipment, get our instructions, get our paperwork, take everything to site, interface with the client, uh, run the cables, install the TVs and the projectors, set up the restaurant equipment. But let's take it a step further. Let's start educating installers on the fundamentals of Crestron. Uh, system, component, programming. We don't want to sit down behind a computer screen and, 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 and write code. I agree with that, but we should have the ability to intelligently enter a, a AV site with Crestron and understand when things are working, when they're not, what are the different components, how do I say my programmer is on a different uh, remote site, how do we communicate and collaborate and make things work, uh, what type of computer do I need? I mean, let's get started. Let's start from the ground and build up from there. What do we have here today? Yeah, so in front of you here, we've got kind of a very, very basic Crestron system. We've got a transmitter. This would typically go at a table, like a boarding table. Um, we've got a DMPS 
Custom processor. This is a processor and a switcher, a video switcher. Um, we've got a projector as the output. Sometimes there'd be a receiver because the projector is usually far away. In this case, we didn't have one for a demonstration, so we omitted that. We've connected the receiver or the projector directly to the DMPS. And then we've got a touch panel to provide the control. So all of this is connected through a network switch, and this okay. is just a simple little system that can route from here to there based on how you select it here. Okay, let me try and recap that in uh, some really basic words, terminology. Let's say this is my first week as an AV installer. So AV, I need a display. Right now, today, instead of it being a TV, our display would be the projector. That's right. right. Okay, so then we also need a signal. So we got to start from point A and end up at the display. So let's say our signal is a, a laptop. So are you telling me that I patch my laptop into the transmitter? Yeah, that's correct. We've got a, it's basically an HDMI cable here. There's also a VGA connection on this transmitter. Okay. Now VGA is old school, but still exists. You will see it. So it's nice to have the ability to have options. HDMI is what I mostly see out there, but we do have DisplayPort. We'll get to all those different types of connections as we go. So we got our source, which is a laptop then it goes into the transmitter. Where does it go after the transmitter? So after the transmitter, it gets to a video switcher. Now this device here is a Crestron DMPS 3-4K-150-C. Uh, and basically it is a combined Crestron master processor as well as a switcher. So this switcher has the ability to, to route video. So you can have local sources at the rack. Okay. where the switcher is. You could also have a couple of different transmitters coming to this. By local, you mean it's sitting right next to it. Correct. It's you... not at a different location in the room. It's not at the boardroom table. It's not in a, in a, a closet. It's right next to it. Yeah, something that okay. you could connect with like a six foot cable. Perfectly. Perfect. So that can plug into here as well as the sources from, from a table. And one thing we didn't mention is this is kind of a commercial system. Yes. Similarities with residential, but we're focused more on where our experience lies in the commercial, commercial space. Sure. And so this Crestron DMPS processor also has a Crestron processor built in. So the Crestron processor is controlling the switcher portion. It's talking to the touch panel. Okay. And it's also communicating to connected devices to, to do different things. So for example, it this transmitter actually can switch between the HDMI and the VGA. Okay, wait. I think I, I get what you're saying. So built into the processor, the processor is the brains of the system. It accepts all the signals and it issues the commands in and out. So how do we send a command to the actual processor? Okay, so in the processor, there's a program that's running. Okay. Um, we're not going to talk about the actual programming because that's a completely different ball of wax that can get really complicated. Sure. It doesn't have to be, but it's kind of for a different different skill set. We're not trying to teach all the installers to be programmers because I think that's a bad idea. Not everybody gravitates towards that. Some will, and I think that's good. Some learn it out of necessity because you'll see it so often that you just get tired of picking up the phone and begging for help. So you kind of learn the ins and outs of what you can just to be useful to yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm kind of going on the premise that somebody else has created this program. We've loaded it onto the DMPS processor, sure. and it communicates with a program that's loaded, a corresponding um, display file, essentially, touch panel file, that's loaded on this touch panel. Okay. And this will show you different buttons. When you press the buttons, it sends the commands to the program. The program sends the commands out like serial ports, that's how we're controlling this projector. Sure. Or through the network to control, for example, this transmitter and any number of other devices like blinds controllers or you know lighting processors, stuff like that, would could be either RS-232 or they could be network based as well. Good. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, let's just uh, maybe summarize everything in its simplest form. Let me try first because you know I'm not the programmer. So I see things a little bit differently. So we have the input device to issue the commands, which is the touch panel. The end user, me, I walk into the room, I want to turn on the projector. Instead of setting up a ladder and pressing power on the projector, we have automation, which is the Crestron system. 
nice and conveniently on the wall or on a table, this should have the ability to turn on the projector. So that's where I press on, beep, command goes down into the processor. Okay. Into the processor, it does its uh, computing, it figures out where the command has to go to, and it sends it to the projector. Correct? Correct. Cool. Well, take it away. I guess what I would say um, to kind of reiterate on, on how Gus described it is without the Crestron control system, you'd be running around with the projector remote, turning the projector on, you'd be going to a rack to press buttons on a switcher, Yes. and you might be going to a table to switch between inputs somehow. I don't even know how you do that. But you have to do all these things manually. If there's a screen, you got to go to the wall and switch it. And yeah. that's basically the problem that Crestron is solving. Now, it's obvious to me, because I program a bunch of these systems. I'm always doing Crestron programming. So to me, it's second nature. But if you're just installing it, you might not even really realize what what you're trying to achieve with all this stuff, because you don't really know what it does. I think one of the problems that I've seen is if you're just an installer, sometimes you don't even get to see the systems when they're done. Is that correct? Uh, well, I guess when I first started out, I would be pulling cable, not knowing what it's for, uh, building racks, setting things up. But in terms of the mechanics and the understanding behind the scenes, under the hood of what it did, absolutely not. Um, I think we're going to change that, though, because the more collaboration that we can establish within our industry, and we realize that every single component is important. Sales guys are important. They go out there and make the jobs. Designers are super important because they make sure that the equipment that we take to site works. Programming is important. Installation is important. So let's start to create a community of AV uh, professionals, I think, that share knowledge, help each other out, help each other get started, and um, we're here to help. Yeah, I think the industry is expanding. There's a lot of opportunities in a lot of different areas, even new areas that are emerging. Okay. Well, with that in mind, let's uh, continue on to video number two, where we get a little bit more specific about the basics of the system and try to convey some more information. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> 